The dramatization you are about to see is based on an actual, investigated, and documented case history of psychic phenomena. It is the next step beyond. a violent and swift-moving electrical storm attacks the city. Ellen Waring, asleep in her suburban bedroom, and Alex Peters, working the night shift in this power plant, are simultaneously struck by a two-pronged thunderbolt of psychic lightning. They are charged with a force that neither can comprehend. They are swept up by a flood tide of emotions and events that neither can change any more than all of the powers of man could call a halt to the downfall of the heavens. He was hit by something. He went flying backwards and fell down the steps. How do you feel, Alex? Ellen. Ellen. I don't think it's time you came back to bed. Baby, I'm gonna be up in an hour. This wasn't a dream, it wasn't. Sure, I know. It was a, a premonition. Your grandmother's gypsy blood talking to you. I saw you lying on the floor in the bank. It was so real. It was as real as anything that's ever happened to me. Well... If we're not going to bed, I'm going to have a drink. Okay, you can button your shirt up. You've apparently had a slight stroke, Alex. And that's not necessarily serious in itself. But there is a chance of a deteriorating circulatory condition. Ellen. Everybody has bad dreams. But it wasn't like that. It was this loud, crashing sound. And, and this clanging in my head. And these people. All these people, these frightened people all around. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, there you were dead. You were dead. Okay. Have it your way. I'm dead. Now, can we go back to bed? Oh, darling, if you love me, promise me that you won't go to work. Promise me that, please. Ellen, for heaven's sakes. Would you promise me, please? please? Ellen, are you awake? I mean, really awake? I mean, be sensible. Are, are you really suggesting that, 
uh, that I call up the bank and say, uh, bless him, I'm sorry, I won't be in the work today uh, because this, um, this lovely lady who's my wife yes. thinks that something terrible is going to happen to me if I do. I warned you what would happen if you didn't stop pushing yourself working those extra night shifts. Doesn't matter. Look, go see your doctor. You can't do anything. I'm gonna be dead by tonight. What are you talking about? Ellen, now stop it. Stop yes, it. Yes, please. George, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, please. Please don't leave me. Please. Please. All right, all right, all right, darling, I'll, I'll stay home. There's light. A million colored lights were exploding inside my head. It's symptomatic of a stroke, Alex. Then suddenly I realized that I was going to be dead. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to die tonight, I know it. Alex! But you were asleep. What makes you so sure that it wasn't a dream? I can't explain any better than I already have. All I know is that it was clearer than you are standing over there. All right. Uh, if it wasn't a dream, then what was it? You said the word. Premonition. You won't know that until it comes true. Oh, George. Hello? Oh, good morning, Phil. No, no, he hasn't left yet. Um, I, I was just about to call you. He's, he's not coming into work today. No, oh, no, no, it's nothing serious. Just a minute. Darling, Phil wants you to know Mr. Masterson called. Let me talk to him. Phil, what's this about Masterson? Today, but he wasn't due until next Monday. I see. All right, I'll be right down. Darling, darling, you promised. You promised me. I know, Ellen, but this is important. Important? More important than your life? Darling, I'd like to humor you, believe me. Can't, so can't somebody take care of this Masterson business? No. Why not? Because he's the federal bank examiner, that's why not. So, what would they do if you called in sick? What would they do? What would we do if I suddenly had to go to jail? Don't worry, I, I can fix it. I just need some time. That's, that's why I've got to go to work today. Look, it's not as bad as it sounds. It, we've, uh, we've had some heavy expenses lately. He, uh, a trip to Europe, unexpected medical bills. I, I don't know what you're saying. Don't worry, it's all right. I can fix it. Sleep for one night, young lady? What? What time is it? It must be late. Yeah. Why didn't you wake me? I just got home. How come? Uh, many things to do. Where'd you have breakfast? I didn't have breakfast. Why should I have breakfast out when I've got such a good cook at home? Hey, school. What am I going to do about school? Hey, now, are you really worried about missing a day of school? Well, not really. <laughs> come on. Let's get some coffee. How do you want 
your eggs. No eggs, just coffee, hon. How come? Ah, uh, not hungry. But you can't live on just coffee. Oh, you just worry about putting flesh on your bones, young lady. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. Then why do you keep looking at me like that? Keep looking at you like what? Funny. Do you feel all right? Sure. You know what I think? What? I think you're terrific. Excuse me, sir. Who do I see about? I want to talk to someone about my estate. Mr. Waring or Mr. Carter can take care of you. Ellen, for heaven's sakes. I'm snowed under with work to do, and you keep needling me with this ridiculous dream. Ellen, I'm going to hang up now. Ellen, listen to me. Ellen, goodbye. Uh, Nell, send in Mr. Peters. Yes, uh, Mr. Peters, uh, sit down. Yes, sir. I understand the bank gives advice on wills. Yes. Uh, um, I don't have a will. Uh, the only family I have is my 12-year-old daughter. Sh she's handicapped and needs a lot of physical therapy and so on. Oh, yes, fine. Well, why don't uh, we set up an appointment for... Uh... No, no, I got to see you now, today. I'm sorry, it's just that it's very important. Can't you spare at least a minute? Well, uh, yes, I... I imagine I can, uh, spare a few minutes. You said there was just you and your daughter. And she's handicapped. In a wheelchair. And she needs about $300 a month for physical therapy if she's ever going to get the use of her legs again. Mm -hmm. And then I figure about it. Another 400 a month, to, you know, to live on. Well, that seems modest enough. Uh, on an estate of only a hundred thousand dollars, well, uh, the interest on that would a uh... hundred thousand dollars. Well, when you start to figure it out, your insurance, uh, your bank account, uh, the stocks, uh, uh, real estate, and uh, so forth. Uh, You'd be surprised how quickly it all adds up. Uh, I see. I got um, $675 in my savings account. I don't have any stocks. My insurance is $10,000. That's it. I see. Uh, what about Social Security, the government? Well, uh, yes, if uh, your daughter were totally disabled and... Uh, something were to happen to you, her guardian could apply for uh, survivor's benefits. Uh, the government would add to what you have already paid into Social Security, and uh, her benefits would come to $327 a month. What about the $10,000 from the insurance? The interest would amount to $65 a month. That's it. That would leave you... Uh, Still $50,000 shy. Look, Mr. Peters, I'd like to be able to help, but...
Absolutely, Alex. Man can't have too much insurance. I just signed there. You give me your check for $100 as a binder, and we're in business. That's it. And I'm covered now. You will be, as soon as the doctor completes his examination. You didn't say anything about a physical examination. Formality, that's all. You can hardly blame the company when you bounce your policy from 10 grand to 50. But that means I'd have to take the physical before the policy's in force. Piece of cake, Alex. Takes maybe 10 minutes. I'll set it up with a doc first thing tomorrow morning. No, no. I want to do it now, today. But what's the rush? Today's half over. I mean, it's not as if you're going to suddenly keel over and die, is it? I'll call the doc first thing in the morning for the physical. Dad, why'd you do that? Carolyn, how long have you been <laughs> what are you doing? Spying on your dear old dad? Why'd you throw it away after going to all that trouble? Look, I just decided we've got better things to do with our money. My therapy and all. It's awful expensive. Hey, we're making out okay. Only because you're working two shifts. You're so tired all the time. It's not fair. Look, in a couple of years, you're going to be back on your feet. You're going to get a job. And then you're going to take care of me, right? Maybe. I hate the idea of leaving you, even for a day. But maybe I ought to spend some time with Aunt Phyllis in Boise, like she said. You do like your Aunt Phyllis, don't you? I mean, if you, if you had to live with her, it, it wouldn't be so bad, would it? Well, no, I guess not. I wouldn't mind it for a couple of weeks, I guess. If you had to go live with her permanently... Why would I ever have to do a thing like that? What could happen to you? Oh, nothing, probably. I was just looking ahead. <laughs> you never know about the future, kiddo. Daddy, something is wrong, isn't there? No, baby. No, nothing. Honest. Daddy. All that about living with Aunt Phyllis and the insurance? Daddy, I don't want to leave you. Hey, kiddo. Nobody's leaving anybody. You tell me the truth? Everything's okay? Really? Really. to call you, but this feeling that I've had the past few minutes is getting bigger. And this terrible thing that's going to happen to you, it's starting to happen right now, and unless you... George! George, don't hang up! Oh! oh. this to the account of Wilson Barrington. Right away, Leslie.
Electricity is an essential ingredient to all forms of life. It would also seem to be part of the latent ability in all of us to send and receive messages psychically. This ability has been called mental radio. What Ellen Waring saw did happen. George was in fact hit and fell to the floor of this bank. She did not see her own death, perhaps because, as the psychologist would explain, it was the transference of a form of an image that was too shocking for her to accept. But both receivers of the two-prong fork warning did in fact shortly afterwards cross paths for the very first time and within seconds of each other breathed their last. In the parlance of the parapsychologist, it would be called one of those rare occasions of a double premonition. Both were victims of the same bolt of psychic fork lightning.